a radio and cognition are at such bad levels. They cram in so much difficulty into one area and they are impossible to play. They should be harder than Zodiac because the gunplay in that level is a lot easier. I can't even do their first clicks. Hi guys, it's me Hyperbola, and today I'd like to show you how to learn and beat levels more efficiently. When you're playing GD for the fun of it or because you're a masochist, you'd always want your levels to be beaten fast and efficiently. I mean, who'd want to die at the last wave of Sonic Wave 16 times? Couldn't be me. <laughs> the main basis of this video will be the statement made by your average GD player, DuckPoop69. There are several things wrong with this statement, which I'll go over in the process of this video. As for what I'll cover in regards to how to get better, I will cover four ways to learn a level more efficiently and some practical advice on mentality and playtime in GD. In terms of learning a brand new subject, there are three ways to start to deep learn something effectively. But first you're probably wondering, what even is deep learning? Deep learning is the process of learning something extremely effectively, to the point of near mastery. It's a term used by brain scientists and AI devs quite frequently, but how do we actually pull it off? Well first you need strong input when it comes to something completely foreign, like a new GD level. Those three main types of input advertised earlier are auditory learning, visual learning, and hands-on learning. As for these, I will cover different ways to learn parts of a GD level to help get them done faster. Firstly, I'd like to talk about auditory learning. After all, this is a rhythm-based platformer, so auditory learning is an important skill to have. The community praises levels that sync like Penatos or Nagafus because they are very easy to learn and are fun for the most part, as clicking to the music can be satisfying to do. The simplest way to auditorily learn a level is to click to the music. I know, easy, right? However, this statement is a little vague and I did that on purpose, because sometimes you don't click on the obvious drum kick or vocal. Sometimes levels are pretty off sync. If you want to still use auditory learning, look for more nuanced things about the song at hand. Maybe you should click from halfway into a background instrument's note, or the second eighth note in a fast liquor sequence. If you're not wanting to get into music, there is another solution to that issue, and that is to have people learn it for you. Although having loud clicks may be satirized, when auditorily learning a level, having a ready completion with loud clicks available may be your saving grace. It's like clicking to the music, but clicking to the clicks instead. Clicks are usually not very easy to memorize, and need one extra step. When doing this, you should link the clicks to the songs or vocals or even GD levels you've heard or played in the past. Have you noticed that the spam at 55 in Devil Vortex has a very similar click pattern to the three times speed straight corridors in Jake's Silent Circles rendition? Getting far. Maybe not, but now you do. By giving your brain unique or unorthodox associations to your learning experiences, you make things more memorable. Next, I'd like to talk about visual learning. Visual learning comes from things that you can see, hence the name, and can also be pretty powerful when learning off-sync levels. When you see a piece of decoration in a level that aligns with a successful input, try clicking that at alignment again and see if you're more consistent at it. If yes, congrats, you found something you can use to make the level easier. If not, try another piece of deco or try another method. It's as simple as that. Try to single out that piece of deco when learning to make it more effective. Finally, I'd like to talk about the very common method of hands-on learning. This is playing the actual level from a start post or from zero. This can take a very long time to do, but is highly effective in the long run. If you practice the end of a level more than you did, you'd be a lot more consistent. That proved to be effective for me when fluking down base from 70 and having only one last way fail on Sakupin Hell. Levels where people die at the end frequently, sometimes up to 7 plus times. Another way to practice this is to get a copy of the level and slightly nerf the hard timings. After you get consistent at those, start rebuffing them to the point of the level's actual difficulty or above it. That way you can start to build consistency and after removing the excess buff, you can play the parts a lot easier. 
All these methods are great for input, but what should overshadow all of this is output, or putting what you've learned to the real world, or rather in-game use. I can paraphrase Albert Einstein about how if you can't explain it simply, you aren't good enough at the subject to call yourself good at it. I find that statement very true. If you find that I'm calling your skill out, don't take it too personally or use what I've said to your advantage. Try explaining to yourself what to do in a certain part of a level, or play out what should happen in your head. If you're annoyed with a sibling and they ask how you're doing, you should probably say something non-aggressive, but if you don't want that, try explaining to them what you're putting yourself through for possibly several hours a day and see if they don't burst from vexation or fear. So to conclude and sum up this section, the three types of input learning are great ways to look at learning in GD level, but all of those are terrible if you don't have a good source of output. When attempting extreme demons or a new hardest level, the time you spend pouring hundreds of hundreds or even thousands of attempts can be quite mentally taxing. Even I have had experiences where something felt like it was too much for me at a given moment. In this part, I'll talk briefly about mentality and give some advice to players that aren't having a good time. When you aren't burnt out, you should be trying to get into flow state on the levels you're attempting. But what is flow state anyway? Basically, flow state is your state of mind being formless and shapeless, like water. It can morph and improvise while being contained to its limits. To learn more about flow state, Content creator Norkwork has a good video on this topic, so go check it out. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But what happens when you are burnt out? You've poured thousands of attempts on a level to no avail, and it seems like an endless cycle of grief. There's a simple solution that works in the short term and long term, and that is to take a break. Yet another satirized aspect of the GD community that's been overlooked as an answer on how to get good. Taking break is fundamental when trying to achieve a long term goal. You might be wondering, how do I get good without even trying? The answer is, you are, but subconsciously. Taking a break has many unseen benefits that some people have yet to reap the rewards of, such as, you don't have constant stress to worry about, you have time to do another thing you like, for me, lockpicking or reading a book, you can explore star grinding and creating, you have time to eat, sleep, and perform other life tasks like schoolwork if you don't already do those and you have time off of a highly stimulating screen. You don't want to take months or years off as that can critically damage your skill, but a break that lasts from minutes until up to a few weeks can easily be recovered from. If you don't feel the need for a break, perhaps you should reconsider. Reggie Filsamy, former CEO of Nintendo of America, says it perfectly. If it's not fun, why bother? If you picked up GD for fun, then you shouldn't have to stress over it. Know you have a life to live, or know that this is an infinitesimally small part of the universe's overall existence. Too small for you to comprehend, and manipulating RGB on a surface in a certain fashion has no point anyway. You can think about it differently, as not everyone is a nihilist like me, but you can beat it eventually if you take it in healthy bite-sized chunks. But if you try to eat the whole elephant, you'll either explode or choke to death first. Take my word for it. If you think a level's too hard for you, most of the time, you're right. Although practicing levels way harder than your skill level is a good way to get better, don't take those challenges full time unless if you have the confidence and skill to do so. Try slowly building up to your goal of beating a top 50 or even a top 10 by beating lots of top 150 slowly, increasing in difficulty. If your endgame is 9 circles, try problematic or fractured circles first. Maybe even trying some parts of Crimson Clutter to help with that extra skill boost. Having a good mindset and a good form of release is great to have, and is essential in order to get good at GD. It's even a must-have in the real world, so the faster you adapt to that, the more successful you will be. Looking back on GD's mental game, there are many good ways to learn a level, but if you don't apply it, it all goes to waste. If you aren't having fun with the game, take a break and try again later. Have a good mindset whilst playing, as you'll fall short if you don't. To conclude, I leave you with this. Be the change you want to see. Do things in your own way, as only you can see your ideal goals, but be open to better ideas that can do the same thing. Thanks for watching. You can check out Extreme Demon Completions or my other video essay on my channel, and if you're feeling nice today, although completely optional, you can like the video and or subscribe to my channel. Thanks to Mulsey for the video idea, and have a nice day.